Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Go in and praise him. Go in and praise him. Praise him. Yes. Yes. Go in and praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Go in and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Go on and praise him, saints. Go on and praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. It's all right. He's worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. God is an awesome God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless your word on today. Speak to our hearts and our minds, God. Search our hearts, dear God. Forgive us of any unconfessed sin, sins of omission, sins of commission. Help us, dear God, to walk upright in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear God, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace. New mercies every day. New mercies every day. Every day. New mercies. Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning, you got a new dose of mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when you go to bed at night, he's storing it up for you when you wake up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can take your seats again. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. I just want to say a couple things before I get into the message. First of all, I want to say thank you uh, to Mount Calvary. Y'all know, like my wife said, I don't like folks doing stuff for me. Um, and I think I got the spirit of my mother because my mom was the same way. Um, you know, I was raised to be a servant, and that's how my family was. And, and I thank God for my wife. A lot of times my wife will do stuff for me knowing her full well that I'm just you not know, going to really want anything, but she does it, and I thank God for my wife. I thank God for all of you, Sister Joyce. I thank God for you doing what you did. Uh, it's funny, too, because nobody knew. noticed. Last night we were up in, uh, in North Jersey, and I had a flat tire. And I had $100 left to get me to the end of the week. And it cost $80 to get the tire fixed. <laughs> so uh, I thank God because uh, uh, I put air on it and prayed all the way up to Jersey City. And then we got out to the church, the tire was flat again. So thank God I had a can of fix it flat. I prayed all the way back to Burlington. And uh, God is so good, you know, so. They, and they had one tire left, though. The cheapest tire that they had, they had one left. <laughs> so God is good. <laughs> Amen. But God, I just want to talk a little bit today about uh, a topic that I think Mount Calvary, this is a Mount Calvary message. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. It's funny, God is so good. I was thinking about these scriptures for most of the week. And last night I was sick. I, I might have got about an hour of sleep last night. I was throwing up and just all, I was a mess. Uh, and, I, and I got up in the morning and I turned, because uh, I try to catch a little Charles Stanley sometime when I'm, a, you know. And I turned and Charles Stanley was preaching from the exact same scripture that I was thinking about. So I said, okay, Lord, thank you. So Numbers chapter 13, but I'm going to use a couple of other scriptures too. Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, 
of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Now, what God told Moses to do was to take the leaders of each of the 12 tribes and go spy out the land. And the reason why God chose the leaders to go because you would think being the leader that you would be a person of faith. But it didn't turn out that way. And so let's uh, go over to, well, I want to look at uh, verse 2, just one more thing. It says, which I give unto the children of Israel. God already told them that the land was theirs. And see, a lot of times we miss that when we read the scripture. Sometimes we read the scripture, you really need to pay attention to words. He didn't say, I'm going to give it to you. He said, it's yours. So I used to wonder, well, if it's yours, why did he send out the spies? I'm going to tell you all in a minute. All right, now go over to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is. And the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. Now I used to look at that verse and I said, well, wait a minute, if he told them the land is theirs, why did he send them on a spy mission? But this is something you have to understand. And I was in the military. Before you engage the enemy, you need to know a little bit about the enemy. So God was using military tactics with the children of Israel. Because, yeah, God gave them the land, but they was going to have to fight for it. And this is something a lot of times we forget as Christians. God gave us the victory, but you still got to fight. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The victory is ours, but you still got to fight. I was in Operation Desert Storm. And a lot of the Desert Storm veterans, we take pride in the fact that Desert Storm was really the one battle since World War II that the United States outrightly won. We did. We, Desert Storm was over in three months. We declared war on Iraq. January, we sent troops over. And by July, the war was over. And the reason why was because Iraq had this huge army amassed on the, on the border of Kuwait and or Iraq. Huge. Every tank, every rocket launcher, they had like a whole arsenal. If you looked at it on the news, it looked like Iraq was like ready for battle. But what happened was the United States Air Force bombed them so bad. By the time the Army and the Marines got there, they, they came out like this. One of my buddies was an Army Ranger. He said when they crossed over to Iraq, the Iraqis had threw the guns on the ground, had their hands up in the air. That's how the enemy is with us. The enemy has no power over us. The enemy has no control. Now, Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell represent authority, satanic authority. All the authority of hell has no power against the church. But we don't act like it. We don't act like it. In some ways, we act just like them, them 10 spies. Let me, we're going to look at this. So... He said in verse 18, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. Basically what God was doing was, he was giving them an intel briefing. And he was telling them, I want you to go check it out. He didn't tell them to check it out to find out whether they were bigger or stronger so much. And said, what, this is what the land I gave you looks like. Yeah. Sometimes we don't receive blessings because we're scared. God is trying to bless each other and give us stuff, and a lot of times we're scared. Because a lot of times, in order to obtain the blessing that God has for you, it's going to require some fits and work. Faith without works is? Yes. So a lot of times, you know, God is saying, okay, yeah, I gave it to you, but you're going to have to work a little bit. Yeah, I believe that God wants Cam to save, but it ain't going to happen unless we do what? Witness. Preach. Cast out some devils. Feed the hungry. Help the homeless. Went and watch God work. I'm going to tell you something. Since we started doing this homeless ministry, I see at least five or six of the homeless people have got jobs now. They got apartments now. Yeah. But you know what? The, the two that was here, that they, they said, if it wasn't for you guys, because I'm going to never forget, one of the homeless guys, he, uh, I forgot his name, the little short guy, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he, he got an apartment. But I never forget, he told me one day, there were times when he'd be laying out there in the cold and he'd be praying and saying, God, I need something to eat. I don't know where it's going to come from. And then we'd show up. Yeah, God wants to use us, saints. And we can't look at the, the scenario, the scenery, and say, it's too hard. In Camden, Camden, this is the worst city in America. 
I don't care what the news says, but what does God say? Yeah, we're going to take the land. We're going to help the drug addict. I already hooked up with some drug counselors at Cooper. And one of the things we're going to try and do this summer, he already told me that anytime you want me to come down to the church and put on a seminar, they'll do it. I know two of the drug counselors from, um, from Ancora, and one of them works at Cooper, and, and they're saved. And they want to help. And God will send people to help you accomplish his mission. Because yes. we don't have the expertise to do a lot of this stuff, but God will send the person with the expertise. All right. Let's look over in verse... 27. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So they came back with baskets of fruit, grapes the size of golf balls, pomegranates that looked like this, and just all this food and all this stuff. And you'd have thought that right, that alone would have made them say, Let's get moving. It's like moving next door to the Acme supermarket and having a price plus card. Yeah, when the food is there, the, the land is there, the land is, God said it's already yours. But after they said all of this, then they said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak. Now, the children of Anak were giants. They were like the Philistines. They, they, they had a lot of giants in Philistine, Philistia. Anak, same thing. There were a lot of giants. So they saw these big guys got terrified. I think about this, and it's funny. I love basketball. And I love the Sixers. I love the Celtics more, but I love the Sixers too. And they got this little guy on the Sixers. His name is McClintock, a little white guy. Now, he's like the last guy you would expect to help them win a game. He's little. He's slow. He don't won two or three games for the Sixers already. You know why? Because the one thing he can do real good is shoot. He's not fast, but if you throw him the ball while he's open, he doesn't, he doesn't rescue the Three games, he didn't, he didn't hit them, them, them last-minute shots. Now, what does that tell you? You don't have to be the best. Yeah. All you got to do is be anointed. Yeah. Each one of us has a gift and anointing to do what God needs to be done to help us win the war. Your anointing might be different than mine. Mine might be different than yours, but each one of us has a gift. I thank God for Sister Yolanda. I thank God for Brother Al, because I'm a no-singing I'm a no -singing preacher. I like to sing, but I, my voice is horrible. But that's not my gift. Some people walk in the prophetic, like my wife. That's not my gift. I'm a teacher. I know what my gift is. Whatever your gift is, walk in it. And God will bless you. God already gave them the ability to go in there and take the land. But the, as soon as they talk about the blessings, the first thing they talk about how hard it's going to be. God didn't tell them to mention nothing about hard. Because God was the one that was going to win the battle. Did, you, did the walls of Jericho, did, did, did Joshua tear the walls down? No. God did and if you read that story, the walls didn't fall over. They didn't fall in. The Bible says they came down. It was almost like God's hand pushed them walls into the ground. And you say, how do you know that, Elder Stevens? Because archaeologists found the wall of Jericho. That's why they have signs a lot of times back to the Bible. And they found the wall underground. God pushed that wall down. And the children of Israel marched in and won the battle. There's walls in our life that God wants to push down. But the reason why they ain't coming down is because we ain't got no faith. Some of the walls we have are walls inside of our heart. Walls of unforgiveness. Walls of bitterness. Walls of jealousy. Walls of hatred. Yeah, those are walls. And they keep us from achieving what God has for us because God is trying to break through those walls so we can be blessed. The Bible says in Psalm 51, the, 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 the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite spirit. God has to break us sometimes. You know, contrary to the prosperity preachers, sometimes God does allow trouble to get you to do right. I don't care what people say. You read the Bible, it's all through the Bible. Did it to Paul? Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He didn't say what it was. I got an idea. But Paul asked God three times to remove it. God said, no, my grace is sufficient. I'm going to tell you something. Last night, I was sick as a dog. I was so sick, I wouldn't even describe how sick, but I was sick as a dog. I thought I was going to die. That's how sick I was feeling. And, you know, so I, I, I'm like, okay, God. I got I got to preach today, and, and I'm like the, the more I started praying that prayer, it's like the sicker I felt, and so I came that close to saying, Stephanie, you got to preach today. It was like Lord said, no, I want you to preach today. I wasn't gonna argue with God, but I trust me, I was, I was ready to argue with God. I don't care what your limitations are. If God tells you to do something, do it. Cause with God, there's no limitations. Yeah. You might say I'm not smart enough. The mind of Christ. 
I'm not strong enough. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Stop making excuses. Moses said, Lord, I can't talk. God said, Moses, I made your mouth. And I'm going to get your brother to talk for you. God will not allow you to have an excuse. No excuses, because God is in control. No excuses, because God is all powerful. No excuses, because his word is true. If God said it in his word, stand on it. I'm going to say this. I thank God for people with prophetic gifts. But there's a danger with folks that have it and they don't don't use it properly. Because a prophetic gift is supposed to draw people to Christ. A prophetic gift is supposed to draw people into the perfect will of God. That's why all prophecies in the Bible weren't all happy, fuzzy, warm. A lot of them were warnings. Whenever the kings of Israel got beside themselves, God was sent a prophet or a prophetess to get them straight. When David sinned with Bathsheba, he sent Nathan. God gave Nathan a word to give David, and that word made David repent. So a prophetics ain't, ain't always going to be about you getting a car or a house. But that's what we turn into, the Holy Ghost horoscope. Sometimes God got to speak a word into you to get you to do right. Yeah. Many times in my life, I've been going the wrong direction, and God will send somebody, and it don't have to be somebody with a collar and tie on. I had a psych patient speak a word to me one day. He crazy as a bed bug. But when he said what he said to me, I knew it was God. You know when it's God talking, because the Holy Ghost inside, he'd be like, that's me talking to you. <laughs> All right. Nevertheless, the people are be strong and dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Not tomorrow, not next week. He said, let us go up at once. Stop delaying what God has for you to do. He said, let's go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Who's stronger than God? Nobody. You should never utter out of your mouth somebody stronger than you. Because God is stronger than anybody. But we still got to fight. I remember, I'll never forget when I tested for my black belt. Whenever they had the black belt test, it was people that offered from all over Korea. It wasn't just the people in the province or the town that I was in. You had the, the, the red belts from North Korea, uh, the, the DMZ, the red belts from down near Pusan. So you had about maybe 20 red belts testing for their black belt. And so we, don't, we didn't know who we were going to fight until we got there. And I had to fight this guy from the DMZ. He was an army ranger. He was twice my size. He looked mean as I don't know what. And he was built like a bodybuilder. And I had to fight this guy to get my black belt. Even my friends were looking at me going like this. <laughs> and I'm like, man, y'all ain't got no faith. And they said, man, we're going to pray for you. I said, no, pray for him. Yeah. He was so overconfident, he thought he could punk me. I hit him with so many kicks and punches, he gave up. They had to stop him. The, 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 the judge was doing like this. So I just went at him. Stop being afraid, saints. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Now, there are going to be times when you're going to get your butt kicked spiritually. It's going to happen. But it ain't because God is not in charge of things. It's because maybe we did something we shouldn't have done. One of the things we always have to do whenever we do anything for God is realize that God is more powerful than our opponent. That God didn't give us the spirit of fear. When you start feeling afraid, rebuke it. It's a spirit. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Yes. When you start feeling, feeling spirit fear rising up, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Yes. I'm going to tell you, the most annoying people to me are folks that are scary. I work with a couple of people at my job. They're the scariest people. Every time we got to face a challenge, oh, I don't know if we can do that. Uh, uh, and I, have to, I, do like, I do like this to them. Come on, stop it. We serve God, don't we? Stop it. I do the time out. When I start, now they got so used to me. When I do this, they go, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Love, power, sound mind. Love meaning God gave us the fruit of the spirit so we can love our enemies. Yeah. That's a part of fighting. Because you ain't going to really do well in ministry if you hate your enemies. 
You got to love them. Because no human being is your enemy. The devil, the devil is your enemy. He uses human beings, but they're not your enemy. Your boss is giving you grief. He or she's not your enemy. The devil may use them to get at you, but you got to deal with the spirit behind the person. Rebuke that devil in your boss. Put, like my wife said, put some oil on the door. <laughs> yeah. Put a, man, there's so many oily crosses in my office. <laughs> People look up, what's that, what's that oil on there? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. God gave us power. All right. And Caleb still the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able. He didn't say we're able. He said we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they're stronger than us. Okay. Verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. It don't matter what they think you look like. It don't matter what people think. That's why, saints of God, you got to learn how to not care what people think. That's one gift God gave me. I can care less whether you like me or not. I can care less whether you appreciate me. You know, yeah, my feelings get hurt sometimes. But you know what? I keep moving forward. Because you know what? People are always going to try and talk against what you're doing for God. Missionary Stevens, why are you going on the mission trips? Don't worry about it. I'm going. Ellen Stevens, why are you in the psych hospital? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Why are you going to do this? Why are you doing that? People are always going to be all up in your business. You got to shake it off and do what God told you to do. Caleb and Joshua, they shook it off. This is the problem with the other 10 guys that never got into the promised land, by the way. You always going to have somebody trying to talk you out of doing God's will. When Nehemiah was up on the wall, some folks came by and they said, we need to have a conversation with you. Nehemiah was like, nope, I'm busy. We just want to talk to you. Not now. Brick. And they just stayed there and just, you know, yeah. They were, they were trying to discourage him. There's always going to be agents of discouragement. They're trying to talk you out of doing the will of God. Just ignore them. I ain't got time to argue with you. I ain't got time to explain to you why I'm doing it. I ain't got time to tell you what God told me to do. Just have a good day. Keep putting the wall up. Amen. Okay, verse 31. And the man went up with him. And saying, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land though which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up its inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. God could care less about the stature of other people. God ain't impressed by your clergy shirt, your title, he ain't impressed by, what impresses God is obedience and faith. Yeah. Yeah, faith without works is dead. Yeah. We love God and we show it by doing faith, having faith. That's how we prove, you know, that's how we prove we love God, by acting on what he said. Yeah. Don't be afraid to witness to your co-worker. Yeah, they, they might not receive it. Don't be afraid. But do it in love. Do it in love. Because you can't win anybody without love. What was Ella Watson's favorite scripture? With love and kindness have I drawn thee? Yeah. Tell them the truth in love. And you do that, and the Lord will bless you. All right, almost finished. The children of Israel, unfortunately, a lot of them that came across the Red Sea didn't make it to the promised land. And they didn't make it to the promised land because they were scared. They were scared. And God wanted them to be obedient. There was something I wanted to say here. Oh, here we go. Verse 29. And the first thing they mention is the Amalekites after Anak. Because uh, the Amalekites were like the biggest thorn in the children of Israel's side. And God had told King Saul to wipe out the Amalekites. But because Saul was more concerned about what other people thought, the Amalekites lived. And it was an Amalekite that killed Saul. It was an Amalekite that tried to wipe out the children of Israel in Esther. Remember the story of Esther? Haman, he was an Amalekite. I, I read this one time and it blew my mind. 
They were talking about bloodlines. And they were saying that Adolf Hitler was a descendant of the Amalekites. Think on that one. Think on that one. Right to the very end, the enemy was trying to destroy the children of Israel. Now let's bring this home. We know what's going on in America right now. Yeah. History has a tendency to repeat itself. I ain't afraid of Donald Trump. Because I serve a mighty God. And we don't learn nothing else from our forefathers. They were not afraid. We didn't have weapons. We didn't have riches. But we had the favor of God. If you ever get a chance, go in the library and look up all the inventions that black people came up with. The list is about that long. But people act like the only thing black people do is sing and tap dance and, and, and play basketball. God blessed us. He gave us favor. We came here on the slave ships and we've risen to become the greatest in our fields. Heart surgeons. Blood plasma was invented by a black person. The first open heart surgery was a black person. The first clock was invented by a black person. The first wristwatch was invented by a black person. The cotton gin, the gas mask. Now why am I sharing this today? Because there's no limit to what you can do with God. And if you look, got the testimony of all these people, one thing they had in common was God. Yeah. George Washington Carver, I, I never I read his biography, he said he prayed and asked God, what can I do with this peanut? Yes. And God gave him about a thousand things to do with a peanut. Yes. Yes. So don't tell me, Mount Calvary, that we can't win this community. Yes. Yeah, we got an old building. Yeah, the heat don't have work. Yeah, we got some challenges. But you know what? Nothing can stop God. Yes. Yes. We want to give clothes to the folks. Look how many clothes we got back there. Yeah, and they still coming. I got folks in the hospital. I got some more clothes for you. Yeah. We're not rich, but God will give us favor. Yes, yes. And my wife and I, we're praying about every challenge that Mount Calvary's going through. That's why you need to get on the prayer line. Because we're praying about it. We're praying for your families. We're praying about your situations. Praying for people to get jobs, housing. We're praying about that stuff. Yes. Prayer works. Yes, Lift your head up and say, prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Yes, it does. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we thank you for your goodness and mercy. And I ask you, God, that you would give us courage to not be like the ten uh, unfaithful spies, but help us to be like Joshua and Caleb, having faith, trusting in your power, trusting in your truth, trusting in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.